As you can tell from the UI indicator, all of these units carry G43s, but some of them perform vastly differently to the others. So today I'll be explaining to you the differences between these G43 wielding units. What's the difference between these few? These few, these few. Starting out, we have the Grenadier G43. These come in several commanders with the Jaegerlite infantry upgrade, costs 60 munitions, equips the squad with two G43 rifles, and gives them a 10% received accuracy bonus, making them harder to hit. So here we are comparing the Grenadier's G43 rifle, that's the red line up here at the top, versus their regular Carnan 8K rifle, which is the blue line down the bottom here. And you can see up close, up to about six range, the G43 has close to twice the DPS of the regular Car 98, at which point it starts to taper off to being very, very similar to the Car 98 at long range. And comparing the G43 to the LMG42 upgrade, you can see up close it once again has close to twice the DPS, but at long range the LMG has close to four times the DPS of the G43. So this makes the G43 more suited to close to mid-range engagements, and if you want the long range, you're better off getting the LMG42. However, the G43 package is not strong enough for them to beat close range specialists up close. Here we have the Commando Sten, 14 damage out to 10 range. Compare that to the G43's around 11 damage out to 6 range. And the G43 Grandies will get smoked up close, especially when you consider they only get two of these G43's. So it's all relative. The G43 Grandies want to be up close versus long range specialists and at long range versus close range specialists. And this is where most G43's defining characteristic can come in handy when selecting what range you want to fight at, their game leading firing on the move performance. You can see the G43's moving performance on the dotted red line here, and comparing it to the stationary performance, you drop less than 15% of your DPS when firing on the move, compared to stationary, and this is extremely good. Comparing this to the Car 98, and that has roughly half the DPS moving compared to firing stationary, and that is common for most units in the game. Here we have the Panzer Grenadier, and they drop about half their DPS. Same story with the Stens on the Commandos that we saw earlier. They have around half their DPS firing on the move compared to stationary, and even units that are thought to be really strong at running and gunning, such as the PPSH from Shock Troops, they drop around a third of their DPS. So this is where the G43 upgraded units can really shine, their run and gun performance is excellent. This makes them very strong at flanking team weapons. You'll do a lot of damage as you're closing the distance. Won't be impacted that much if you're forced to dodge a repositioning machine gun. They're also great at chasing down retreating squads and looking for wipes on them. And going hunting for snipers which often involves a lot of run and gun action. Or if your opponent went for a lot of indirect fire, and you need to stay on the move to avoid getting hit by it. So when should you go for G43 Grenadiers? This upgrade got altered in a recent patch, and before that I generally wasn't a big fan of it, felt that it was mainly effective against Soviets in certain situations, but now you could select them against almost any allied build order and have success, so let's see how they perform in some of those most common scenarios. Against Conscripts Long Range, the G43 Grenadiers will win with around half their health remaining. And starting the engagement at close range, the Grenadiers will win by an even larger margin with around three quarters of their health remaining. And then closing in on Conscripts behind heavy cover, the Grenadiers won 8 out of 12 times. So you can see the G43 upgrade gives you a lot of flexibility on how you deal with Conscripts in the early game. But then in a late game scenario, both squads fully vested up, conscripts with the mobilized reserves upgrade now, and with the cover bonus active, the conscripts completely dominate the Grenadiers long range, winning with over half their health remaining. And then starting the engagement close range, the G43 Grenadiers do fare better, but still lost 9 out of 12 times, so this can make things difficult for the Grenadier user in the late game. Up against Penal Battalion's long range, Penal Battalion should win with around half their health remaining. And starting the engagement close range, the matchup is close to 50-50. Penal Battalions also have more combat bonuses through veterancy than Grenadiers do, so they will stretch that lead a bit further in the late game. So while the G43 upgrade does not give your Grenadiers enough firepower to win the head-to-head -head against the Penals, it gives them enough firepower so that the Penals can't close the distance and win against the Grenadiers, giving better protection to your MG42 or Sniper to beat the Penals, or simply outnumbering them, since it is quite common to have four Grandier squads in a build, but usually only three Penal squads in a build. Against Riflemen long range, 
the G43 Green Deers have a small edge, winning 10 out of 12 times. And then starting the engagement close range, the matchup becomes close to a 50-50. So obviously when you add double bars to the riflemen, they completely dominate the G43 Green Deers in the late game, winning with around half their health remaining, whether that be close or long range. Against bolstered infantry sections long range, the G43 Green Deers will lose quite badly. Generally the section will have around half health remaining at the end of the engagement. Charging in on bolstered infantry sections on open ground, the G43 Green Deers won 7 out of 9 times, generally with around quarter of their health remaining. However, if the section is sitting behind heavy cover, it will now win with 2-3 models remaining. So this is probably a scenario that you'll want to throw the grenade with the Green Deers, to try swing the engagement in your favour. And for a more late game scenario, both squads fully vetted, infantry sections now with double brems upgraded, Green Deers closing in lose 7 out of 9 times. So overall G43 Green Deers are probably at their best against conscript builds and in the early to mid stages of the game before the allied troops start to scale up with their veterancy and weapon upgrades. My personal preference however is for the LMG42 upgrade instead of the G43s. Moving on to the Panzer Grenadier G43s, these come in the same commanders but cost 50 munitions and equips the squad with 3 G43s instead of 2. It also gives them a 20% sight range increase. Here's a comparison of the Panzer Grenadier's G43, that's a blue line down the bottom here, up against the SDG, that's a red line on the top. You can see that the STG does do a bit more damage compared to the G43 right out to around 25 range, at which point the G43 takes over in a big way, doing four times the damage of the STG at max range. So if you're hoping to use your Panzer Grenadiers at long range, G43 is a much better option. And if we look at the moving performance of the G43, we can see they maintain a very high proportion of the DPS. They drop around 12% compared to the STG which gets around half of its performance on the move compared to stationary. So if you're looking to run and gun with your Panzer Grenadiers, also the G43 is a much better option than their standard STGs. So if we compare the Panzer Grenadier G43 to the Grenadier G43, they actually have about 25% more DPS up close, which is quite a lot, and they also taper off a lot less close to max range. They have still about 30% of your DPS at max compared to close, whereas for the Grenadiers it's more like 20%. So yeah, the Panzer Grenadier G43s are much better than the Grenadier G43s. So combined with the bonus sight, they are even better at flanking team weapons than G43 Grenadiers. And the extra long range performance gives you some more flexibility with how you handle certain engagements. Though once again, you will still lose up close to close range specialists. So while I'm not a big fan of G43 Grenadiers, I really like using G43 Panzer Grenadiers. So let's go over a few of the most common matchups so you know how to use them. They will comfortably beat bolstered infantry sections up close, and they will also narrowly beat them long range even when the sections have the cover bonus active. However, once the section equips a single Bren, the Panzer Grenadiers will be expected to narrowly lose. And trying to close the distance on double Bren infantry sections behind heavy cover is a bit of a dice roll. Sometimes you can narrowly win, and other times you will horribly lose. Against double bar riflemen on average, the G43 Panzer Grenadiers will narrowly lose up close, and at long range the two squads are very evenly matched. Against seven man conscripts long range with their cover bonus active, the G43 Panzer Grenadiers have a slight edge, which is helpful because if the Panzer Grenadiers try to close the distance on them in this scenario, they will get dominated. And the Panzer Grenadiers comfortably win this one up close. Against penal troops up close, the G43 Panzer Grenadiers have a small edge. And long range it is very close with the Panzer Grenadiers having an even smaller edge. G43 Panzer Grenadiers are unable to pick up drop slot weapons like this bar. G43 Stormtroopers are very similar to Panzer Grenadiers, except they have a Ka-98 instead of the STG for their fourth rifle, making them slightly more suited to long range instead of close. And even if you upgrade the MP40s before the G43s, once the model holding the MP40 dies and gets reinforced, they'll go back to holding the Ka-98. 
So comparing G43 Stormtroopers to G43 Panzer Grenadiers, and you can see they've got the exact same rifle, so no differences there. Main difference is in target size. Stormtroopers having a slightly lower target size than the Panzer Grenadiers. And also when it comes to veterancy, Panzer Grenadiers kind of getting their bonuses spread across all three stars here, whereas the Stormtroopers kind of get their bonuses arriving in big lumps. Moving on to the Jaeger Command Squad, this is available in the Jaeger Infantry and Storm Commanders. It's equipped with three Grenadier G43s and two Grenadier K98s. The Jaeger Command Squad also has the bonus sight range, as well as camouflage without having to upgrade, and loads of utility from all these different abilities. When it comes to combat performance, the Jaeger Command Squad is a little bit worse than G43 Panzer Grenadiers, both close and long range. So with good combat performance and excellent utility, I recommend the Jaeger Command Squad against all factions. Switching over to OKW now, and we have the Panzer Fusiliers Recon Package that costs 80 munitions and equips them with three G43 rifles. It also increases their sight range by 20% and boosts the squad size to 6 after reinforcement. Here we're comparing the Fusilier G43, the red line at the top, to their K98, the blue line there on the bottom, and that is notoriously weak close range, and that means that the Fusilier G43 does about two and a half times the DPS of the K98 up close, and then marginally more damage at long range as well. So yeah, it's an upgrade at all ranges, definitely worth getting. So if we compare the Panzer Fusilier's G43 to the Grenadier's G43, and if I go back and forth a couple times here, you can see that the stats are identical except for one, and that's in the damage. Fusilier's G43 is doing 14 damage per shot, whereas the Grand is doing 16. So yeah, about 12% less DPS per rifle, though they do get three of them to compensate for that. Jumping into their common matchups, starting out with the bolstered infantry sections at long range, and it's very close to a 50-50 matchup, though the sections have a slight edge. And then closing the distance on a bolstered section behind cover, the Fusiliers will be expected to win with 1-3 to three models remaining. When they have double brands equipped, the Fusiliers will lose quite badly long range, though you can close the distance on them and it is close to a 50-50 matchup in this scenario, maybe with a slight edge to the Fusiliers. Against double bar riflemen long range, the Fusiliers are slightly unfavoured, and then up close the double bar rifles will also be expected to win, this time by a slightly larger margin. Against conscripts with the mobilized reserves upgrade long range, it's basically a 50-50 matchup, and up close the fusiliers win comfortably, generally with 2-4 models remaining. And then closing the distance on them, the fusiliers are slightly unfavored, though they can win. Up against Penals long range, the Penals have a moderate advantage, generally winning with 2-3 to three models remaining. And up close, the Fusiliers have a small edge over the Penals. So Fusiliers are probably looking really appealing right now, but be careful when trying to use them in the early game. So here we have the Volkswagen K98, 4.7 DPS up close, compared to the Fusilier K98, which is only 3.7 DPS up close. So yeah, about 25% more DPS up close, the Fox Grenadiers K98, and they're not even known as an especially strong squad, close range. So yeah, the lack of DPS for the Fusiliers close range can get them a lot of trouble in the early game, especially combined with the fact that they can't build sandbags. They do have a slight edge over the Fox Grenadiers from about 28 range onwards, but it is a very, very minor edge. So this means that most top players only go for one or maybe two squads of Fusiliers for their starting build order, and these will generally be as their third or fourth constructed unit, trading a bit of their early game strength for some late game utility and scaling. Also, because Fusiliers have access to an anti-tank grenade before tech, they can be very helpful at shutting down opposing light vehicles such as the Soviet M3A1. Especially when you factor in that the range of the anti-tank grenade is actually a decent amount longer than the Fox Grenadier's Panzerfaust. So Fusiliers are good all-rounders and can work against all factions, but be careful not to build too many of them in the early game. Now switching over to Jaegerlite Infantry who have the G43 sniper rifle upgrade for 60 munitions and this functions vastly differently to the other G43s that we've seen so far. The most immediately noticeable difference is in rate of fire. Here you can see the Fusilier G43 firing about two and a half times as often as the Jagerlite Infantry's G43 Sniper. 
A rather unique function of the G43 sniper rifle for Jaeger Light Infantry is that if an opposing model is at or below 75% health, which is 60 health, it can kill them in one shot. You still have to land that shot, and that is not guaranteed. You could be shooting at the wrong model, you could just miss your shot, so on and so forth. But yeah, you can do potentially 60 damage with one hit, which is extremely strong. We saw earlier, you know, most other G43s are doing like 16 damage per hit. So being able to do 60 damage in one hit can be very, very powerful. So with that knowledge, now let's take a look at the stats of the Jagerlight Infantry's G43, and there are some major differences. First off, in the accuracy department, we can see the accuracy actually increases with range, which is very unusual. Compare that to the regular G43 for Grenadiers, and that decreases with range, which is much more common. Another major departure here is in the accuracy. They have a 90% penalty when firing on the move in terms of accuracy, which is very, very high, whereas the other G43s only have a 20% penalty. As we saw earlier, the rate of fire on the G43 sniper is quite low. Compare these numbers to these numbers, and we can see like massive increases. And that does lead to the DPS on the G43 sniper to be also very, very low, way lower, especially up close compared to most other G43s. So, you know, from about, you know, like 29 range onwards, it will have slightly more DPS than the Grand Air G43, mainly because, you know, it has super good accuracy long range. But there is a very unique function, which is how it performs against cover. We can see they only have a 10% accuracy penalty against the most common forms of cover, whereas most other rifles in the game have a 50% accuracy penalty. So yeah, if you're firing at units in cover, that G43 sniper rifle can actually still do some pretty good damage. Jumping into their matchups, and we're starting out with the bolstered infantry sections with double brands behind cover long range. Here, the Jaeger lights are expected to win with a bit under half health remaining. However, if we repeat this engagement out in the open, now the infantry sections win 11 out of 12 times, with 1-3 to three models remaining. And this demonstrates two things, the strong performance of the G43 sniper rifle against units in cover, and that Jaeger infantry squads are more suited to prolonged engagements, giving more opportunities for that G43 sniper rifle to crit off the low health infantry models. Against double bar riflemen out in the open, the riflemen actually won 10 out of 12 times, and then with double bar riflemen closing the distance on Jaeger Light infantry behind heavy cover, the riflemen won 9 out of 12 times. Against mobilized reserves conscripts behind heavy cover, the Jaeger Lights win with around 3 quarters health remaining. And then against conscripts in the open long range, the Jaeger Lights won 11 out of 12 times, generally with a bit under half health remaining. And then with Jaeger Lights behind heavy cover, with conscripts oorahing to close the distance on them, the matchup becomes close to a 50 50. Against penal troops long range out in the open, the matchup is close to a 50 50. And then with penal troops closing the distance on Jaeger lights behind heavy cover, the matchup is also roughly 50 50. So, based on those results, Jaeger lights might not seem to be particularly impressive, except for in long range cover to cover engagements. However, in game, the Jaeger lights will frequently run into squads that are below full health and this means they'll mop them up very quickly, or the Jaeger Lights will be teamed up with another squad that can inflict damage on the enemy unit, and this will allow their G43 to snipe off a model almost every shot. Jaeger Lights still have two weapon slots free after upgrading their G43, and that means if they pick up a light machine gun, they are incredibly powerful against enemy infantry squads. Jaeger Lights are one of OKW's best counters to opposing snipers, given that they have camouflage and you can wait for the opposing sniper to come in range. Then they have an ambush bonus attacking coming out of camouflage of 50% accuracy for 5 seconds. This means that you're quite likely to land a couple rifle shots with the Jaeger lights and then finish off the sniper with the G43's critical before the enemy has time to react properly. So combined with their long line of sight, this makes the Jaeger lights a strong option against all three allied factions. And finally, we have the Ossia Sniper's G43. This is completely unable to fire while the sniper is moving. However, it is guaranteed to hit regardless of what type of cover the enemy unit is in, and every hit results in a kill. The only time the sniper can miss is when the enemy squad is retreating, and here the sniper has a 60% chance to hit the retreating squad. 
Snipers are also unable to get inside open top troop transports, though they can get inside closed tops such as the 251. Snipers tend to be at their best against expensive low model count squads, where each shot from the sniper does a significant amount of manpower damage and weakens the enemy squad a proportionately large amount. They are also great against factions that can build a lot of cover and are cover reliant, such as the British forces. So snipers tend to be at their best against the US forces who don't have the opportunity to counter snipe you and the British forces for the aforementioned reasons though are also quite good against Soviets. As always a huge thank you goes out to my Patreon backers and if you want more guys like this one I hope you consider coming on board.